Okay. Yes. Yeah, so in most cases, um, <clears throat> there are some exceptions. Um, for example, if you want to go into academia or you're a graduate student, um, or sometimes when you're applying for federal jobs, you might want a resume that's longer than one page or have something that's called a CV. Um, but most of the time, for most undergraduate students applying to jobs, a one-page resume um, is pretty a pretty good amount. Hmm. All right, Sean is in the lead. All right, so this is multi-select. You can select all the correct answers here. A strong resume bullet point should include a specific task or skill set, an action verb, numbers when possible, and the result or purpose. So select all the answers that you think are right. Awesome. Yeah, so really the answer is all of them. Um, you're not always going to be able to include a number um, in, in every resume bullet point. You know, you're not always going to be able to include a result or purpose, but most of the time, all four of these are really good components of strong resume bullet points. Um, I sometimes say that that numbers and results of purpose really give um, some more like tangibility to what you did in your role. So if you're like, I, you know, mentored students, but you mentored, you know, 20 students um, that that kind of makes it more realistic and the employer can kind of visualize how big of a responsibility that was. Um, so I would say include numbers when it makes it um, maybe like more impressive, um, but not necessarily needing to include numbers all the time. Okay, multi-select. So again, select every answer you think is correct. What can the Career Center help me with? Doing a mock interview, negotiating job offers, career exploration, or direct job placement? This is kind of a trick question. People get this one wrong a lot. <laughs> yep, so it's everything except direct job placements, which basically just means that we don't actually place students into jobs. Um, we'll help students identify jobs and kind of talk them through the application process and make sure they feel confident. Um, interviewing and all of that kind of thing, but we don't actually place students directly into jobs. Um, just about anything else that's career related, including right exploration, negotiating, um, mock interviews, those are all things that the career center absolutely can help with. All right. All right, CSU's primary job posting site is called RamWeb. Jobs for Rams, Handshake, or Rams to Job. Okay. <laughs> that was fast. Y'all were like, we know. We've been on Handshake. All right, that's good news. All right. Multi select. On Handshake, I can find on campus jobs, internships, full time employment, or and employer events. <clears throat> Awesome. Yep, so you can find all of those things on Handshake. Um, sometimes I think folks don't recognize that there are employer events on there, or maybe um, that there's only full-time job or part-time internships, but you can find pretty much everything on Handshake as it relates to jobs. Um, for folks that just joined, we're just doing a Kahoot. Um, there's only a couple questions left, and then we'll, we'll get into a PowerPoint here, but um, <clears throat> let's keep moving. All right, this is a little factoid. Um, what percentage of jobs are found through some form of network? And we have 40 to 55, 55 to 70. So, okay. Yep, so, um, so it's about 70 to 85% of jobs. Um, we're not actually going to be talking about resume or networking that in depth today, but I wanted to put this on here just to include that, you know, the resume is one piece of your kind of career search puzzle. Um, a tool that you have in your job search, but it's definitely not the only thing. Um, and so when you think about the number of things to kind of 
you that you can use the Career Center for to prepare for learning how to network, talking about networking, knowing how influential it is to the job search um, is really important and definitely something that um, we can help with. All right, true or false, you can use the Career Center after you graduate. Yes, this would be kind of a mean one to put up here if it wasn't true. <laughs> Um, so yes, you can use the Career Center after you graduate. Um, for up to one full year after graduation, you have full access to everything that the Career Center offers, um, including you know one-on-one -on -one appointments, employer events, the career fair, everything you should have full access to. Um, and then after one year um, post-graduation, you can still use Career Center services. You just need to do it through the Alumni Center um, at a discounted rate. So yes, if you are panicking after graduation or you're, you know, actively job searching stuff and your graduation date has passed, you can absolutely still come to the Career Center. All right, and our last question, multi-select, um, I can connect with someone at the Career Center by attending drop-ins, scheduling an appointment on Handshake, email, or Instagram DM. Yes, awesome. Yeah, we're not quite advanced enough for Instagram DM at this point. Um, so there are tons of ways you can get in touch with someone. I will say that honestly, if you did DM us on Instagram, they would probably just route you to drop ins or scheduling appointment on handshake, that kind of thing anyway. Um, so feel free to connect with us in whatever way makes the most sense for you. All right, let's look at our scoreboard for the podium. This is nice job. Nice job, Sean. <laughs> Give you a very full round of applause. Awesome. All right, I'm just going to stop sharing, turn that sound off really quick. That's awesome. Um, yeah, thanks, y'all, for doing that. Um, we're gonna jump into just um, presentation stuff, talking about resumes. Um, but for folks, I know some folks have kind of joined in since we started. So just to introduce myself again, um, my name is Madigan, I use she, her pronouns, and I work at the Career Center um, as a career education coordinator doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one student support and presentations and that type of thing. So we're gonna um, talk about resume stuff today, um, touch on kind of as, as much things as we have time for. And then if you're needing any additional one-on-one -on -one support. Um, we'll definitely talk about how you can access drop-ins or how you can make an appointment with either myself or someone else from the Career Center um, as well to make sure that you get the best individualized support that you need for your own job search or career goals. So let me go ahead and open up this presentation. And then I'll just ask you all um, if you're willing um, and we have some cameras off and stuff, which is fine, um, just to engage in the chat, because um, I will have some, some kind of questions for you all. And so if you all can um, engage in the chat, that would be awesome. Sorry, y'all. Once I like screen share, it won't let me move this presentation at all. I'll try it one more time. Stephanie, can you see that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the agenda that we have, we already did the Kahoot. Um, we're gonna talk, we're gonna flip this a little bit, maybe talk about identity and career at the end, see how much time we have left for that. Um, we're gonna start with resumes and a little bit of resume work time. 
So I would say as we go through this content, if you have a resume with you, like a draft maybe that you've started already, um, please pull it up. I think it's really helpful um, to go through the presentation and have your own resume to sort of look at while we're going through it. Um, and then if you don't have a resume, that's totally fine. I would say just maybe get out a blank sheet of paper or something um, that you can type on a little bit and maybe at the very least um, you leave today with, with the start of a draft of a resume. Okay, so what do you all think um, is the purpose of having a resume? Um, I'll start. Um, I think it's just to, it just shows you like your skills and what you've gone through in your life and like your experience for whatever job you're trying to get really. Um, you're really trying to impress the people that are interviewing, interviewing you. Um, just trying to tell them like, hey, like I'm the best for this job. I'm the best uh, uh, applicant. Um, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's definitely like a showcase of your experience, of your skills. Um, of some of your quali qualifications, maybe specifically to that job. Um, and it's really just your entry point, right? Like we always say the purpose of a resume is to get an interview. And then the purpose of an interview is to get the job. So you're not gonna be able to kind of jump from resume straight to job, um, but you wanna show them as quickly as you can um, that you are a qualified applicant, that you're worth you know, spending some more time on. Um, coming to the interview stage of the process. So it really is trying to catch attention of an employer right away and quickly. Um, I'm just curious, um, folks looking at, these are kind of two examples of a resume. Um, what you all notice about these resumes in terms of what you like or don't like about that? Like which resume do you like better? Um, and maybe what about it do you like better than the other? Is it okay if I go again? Heck yeah. <laughs> uh, I get like, obviously I like number two right off the bat. Um, it kind of reminds me of what I had to do one in high school and that's the way I set it up like exactly. And it just look, it looks really good. Um, obviously on number one, you got different fonts. Um, yes, like the, the education paid jobs is in bold and that's what they want to see. Um, but it's just not as condensed and like in some of, in number two, they give like a little description about it. Um, and it just like, it just looks really good, I think. Yeah, awesome, that's perfect. Um, and I saw in the chat, I prefer the detailing of the second. Yes, yeah, so the second one's definitely a little bit more detailed. Any other thoughts about which resume you maybe like or dislike more? Um. The one on the left lacks description of their roles and jobs they had. Um, I know a lot of hires like to see more description of what roles they had to do in their duties. And um, so it just lacks more of like that clarity of what they did during that time. And yeah, it just, it's a little more bare. Um, so that's another thing I noticed about the one on the left compared to the right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so when we're looking at kind of some of the descriptions, right, like from the Kahoot, we, we talked about having an action verb, a result of purpose, maybe some numbers. Um, you can see that some of their descriptions of what they did were using power tools, right, helping volunteers. They're not very descriptive. It's kind of hard for me to picture what this person might have actually been doing or what skills might have been attached to that, right, or how some of those things might transfer to the job that they're applying for now. So um, I've kind of started with this just to show you all that you have really good resume instincts, <laughs> right? Like you can kind of imagine if you were like, you know, looking at resumes, trying to interview someone, you have a good idea already of what looks organized, what looks like it has enough detail, which resume kind of right off the bat looks a little bit more impressive um, and, and the amount of detail that employers are, are looking for. So. Um, something else I just wanted to point out um, is that, you know, on the left, when they organize it based on like paid and unpaid jobs, um, the skills are like pretty generic, I would say. They're kind of hard, like just computer, right? <laughs> it's not very specific. Um, you don't have to organize by paid and unpaid jobs. You can organize by your most relevant experience first, and then maybe some of your 
additional less related experience. Um, and then for the skills, you can be a little bit more descriptive for skills that are really unique to you um, or skills that are really specific to the job. Um, so when I say like really unique to you, um, something like being bilingual or speaking multiple languages, absolutely something you should have on your resume. Um, definitely not a skill that everyone has and is a huge asset to employers. And then when I say something really specific to the job, I mean something like a computer programming language that you know, you know, is required for the job or something, but having something just like communication doesn't really give that much information to the employer. Um, does that make sense? Okay. Cool. Yeah. So you all, you all have really good resume instincts right off the bat. So the three components that I kind of talk about focusing on in the resume, um, and if you have your resume in front of you, you can kind of like analyze them for these things right now. Um, the first is format and organization. Uh, the reason this is so important is because when employers look at your resume for the first time, when they're kind of going through that stack of resumes that they're looking through, about how long do you think that they spend looking at each individual resume on the first, like the first look? Feel free to type some guesses in the chat of like how, how long do you think they look at it? Um, what did you say how long they look at uh, what part of the resume? Just at the first time they look at a resume when it's in like a stack of applicants, how long do you think they look at your resume for on average? I'm gonna throw out a good 30 seconds, maybe. Okay, so we have 30 seconds, about one minute maximum. Yeah. So the first time that employers look at resumes on average across the industry, it's about seven to nine seconds. Um, so it's very fast. <laughs> um, and that's not to say that it's not worth putting a lot of detail into your resume because they will go back and look through it again um, as you know you're advancing throughout the process and they will want to see all that detail. Um, but I say this because if there's a, a resume they're looking at and it's not well organized and it's not formatted consistently, they might not even bother looking at the content, right? If it's because they're looking at so many and they're glancing at them quickly, they want to see those really well organized resumes that have a really nice consistent formatting first before they're going to be able to get into that content. Um, so again, I don't mean that to be discouraging, just to reinforce the idea that you want to make them know right away, right at the top of the resume as quickly as you can, that you are qualified um, for this job, knowing that they got to have a lot of resumes to look through often. Uh, the next one will be content um, in regards to relevance. So I always say that, you know, you should definitely have just a, a resume that's, that's kind of general, but every time you apply to a job, you should have a different version of that resume that's specific to the job. Um, and one of the ways that I'll show you on the, on the resume guide is that we kind of recommend having a qualification section right at the top of your resume, where you're kind of telling the employer, if there's three things that I want you to know about me that are relevant to this job, here they are. You know, it could be the number of years you've spent in customer service. It could be some specific skill set you really want them to see, but um, you want them to know that not only are you a well-rounded person, but you are specifically, you know, well-positioned to be in this specific job. Um, and then the next one is um, content specificity. So you all mentioned, like, I really liked how specific that resume on the right was, right? Give a good level of detail. I would say the number one mistake I see in resumes um, when working with students, and this is across grad students, undergrad students, um, is just not being specific enough and just being too vague in their descriptions of what they did and, and kind of underselling um, how important <laughs> their job was and how many skills they gained from it. Like, I think we we generally really tend to undersell our experiences as being like not that important or not that relevant or that type of thing. Um, I can't tell you how many times I, I worked with students who have said, oh, I was just, a, you know, a, just a cashier, or just a wait staff. Um, and then, you know, as someone who's who worked in food service myself, I'm like, there are so many skills <laughs> from working in, you know, in, in any type of customer service role that if you can really describe those in detail, um, then you won't be underselling the experience. You'll be giving it exactly the, the level of tension that it deserves. Okay, so in terms of what experiences count, um, you may have seen maybe from templates or that type of thing um, that there's kind of like an experience section, an education section, that kind of thing. But it could be paid work, it can be unpaid work, it could be formal experience, it could be informal experience. Um, so something like, you know, if you wanted to go into um, 
a medical setting, let's say, and you had shadowed, spent some time shadowing um, at, at like a hospital worker, um, that shadowing experience can go on your resume, right? It's not necessarily super formal, it's not paid, um, but it's still really relevant that you went out of your way and you took initiative to ask somebody to shadow them. Um, so it could be volunteer oriented, it could even be from class. Um, I work with a lot of engineering students who sometimes their most relevant experience is actually the projects that they do in class. Um, so if it's transferable um, in terms of the skill set, which most things you can gain transferable skill, skills from, and if it's relevant to the job, um, it, it can go on. Um, some other things you might consider including just in, in terms of all the things that are possible to put on a resume, some specific accomplishments, right? This could be like being on the Dean's list or getting an award or recognition, um, certifications that you might have. Um, they might be more or less relevant to, to some jobs, for example, like applying to be a lifeguard. Maybe they would wanna know that you're already CPR certified, right? Um, list of skills or competencies, um, though I wouldn't actually just list them as one name. I would, I would describe them within your qualifications. Um, and, and the qualification section also could replace what you might have seen as like a summary or an objective statement um, or a profile at the top of a resume. Um, affili any affiliation groups, so any like student leadership stuff that you might be involved with or just campus involvement in general. Um, do you think that you should include a photo on your resume? What do y'all think? Yes or no on the photo? No, okay. No, if you have space, no. Um, so one reason that we recommend not putting a photo on your resume is that um, for one thing, um, we only wanna share as much information with employers as we're comfortable with them having. And sometimes them knowing what we look like um, can, can introduce bias or um, give them reason to, not legitimate reason, but right in their mind, give us some reason to, to draw conclusions about us that they maybe shouldn't be drawing. Um, and so one way that we kind of can protect against bias is by not including a photo. Um, also something that some companies do um, is that they will disqualify applicants that include photos as their own sort of method for protecting against bias in hiring. Um, so we, we'll talk a little bit more about bias on resumes in general, um, but I would say in general, in the U.S. specifically, do not include a photo. Um, if you're applying in other countries, there are some countries that um, require you to have a photo, but we definitely don't um, encourage that in the U.S. Um, a LinkedIn profile or maybe a portfolio website, if that's relevant to you, you can always link that on your resume. Um, what do you think about your GPA? Should you include your GPA on your resume? There are no right or wrong answers, right? We're just taking guesses. I would say, yeah, if you're like a kid coming right out of, right out of college um, and it's like you're going for engineering, um, go ahead and do it. But sometimes I think maybe when you're older, maybe 30 and you're doing a new career, it's kind of, hey, that was uh, almost a decade ago. You don't, you don't have to, I guess, but because you probably have other skills and you want them to focus on that. But I would assume after college, you might want to put that on. If it, I saw someone, if it's high enough, maybe. Um, but yeah, if it looks good, go for it. Yeah, again, you all have really good instincts. Um, so I would say, you know, it might be more relevant when, when that's what you've kind of spent the chunk of your time doing in the past four years, that might be something that you want to showcase. Um, potentially, as you get further out into your career, it may be more or less relevant then. Um, but in general, like Jonathan, you're right on the market, if it's high enough, um, there's no requirement that you put a GPA on your resume. It's not suspicious if you don't, um, but we generally say above a 3.0 is worth putting on. Um, and if you're an engineering student, above a 2.5 is usually worth putting on. Um, and that's just, right, it's up to you in general if, if you feel strong about it, but that's kind of where our benchmark lies a little bit. Um, so again, what is relevant, what is transferable? What are you okay with the employer knowing about you? Um, because you are not, there's nothing that's required to put on your resume, right? Um, except for maybe your name and contact information, um, and, and not even necessarily your name, you could put an initial, um, but there's very limited information that's required on a resume. So you have to really think about what do you want them to know about you? Um, 
people have hired folks because of their volunteer experience. Um, some folks are seeing extracurricular, right? What are you doing outside of school? Um, and they're looking for relevant, specific accomplishments and, and being customized to the position. So employers really wanna know that you've taken the time to not just submit your generic resume to them, but one that you specifically crafted for them. So in general, if an employer would be interested in knowing about it, so pretend that you are the person hiring, right? Would I be interested in knowing about this if I were hiring for this position? Um, and you are comfortable with them knowing about it, then it belongs on a resume. So I'm gonna pause here really quickly. Um, I just wanna see if any questions have come up already um, in terms of like, it might be a question specific to your resume. It probably is relevant to other folks um, in the room. So what questions do you all have maybe already about resumes? And then we'll keep going. I actually do have a question um, and it just came to my head. Um, yeah. Do you think, I think um, what's like the appropriate length of a resume? Um, I always assume like you try to wanna, you wanna fill up a, a, a full page, um, but I've never really seen like if they flip it to the back page and it's like, you never want it to be too long because they only look at it for so long. Um, yeah. but I guess I'm asking, do you think a page to a page and a half is okay? Yeah, great question. So in general, I would say for most folks um, in college right now, which you all are, one page is a, is a good length. Um, because employers are wanting to look really at the most relevant stuff and they're wanting to look at it pretty quickly, one page is often enough space. Um, and sometimes if it has a back page, like side, they, they won't even know to flip it over. Um, and there are some exceptions to that. So folks that are maybe going like thinking about graduate school um, or wanting to create a more academic resume or what we might call a CV, those can be longer. Um, applying for federal jobs, um, like working for the Forest Service or something, those tend to be um, longer as well. But most of the time, one page is good. Um, and then I would just say, since you have the one page, use the one page, <laughs> right? Fill it up. Um, we often say, like, don't leave so much white space on your resume. Like you can see from the a few slides ago, like one of the things that you all um, liked about this resume on the right is that it really uses the space well, um, right? Like if you have one page, use the, use the one page fully. Um, then I'm seeing a question from Stephanie um, about, do you include your home address and contact info? Oh, in your contact info. So you definitely want to include contact info, right? Like I said, that's probably the only thing that's like genuinely required on a resume so I know how to get in touch with you. Um, there's no reason to include your home address, really. Um, that's kind of just something folks have been doing for a long time, but I always say employers don't need to know where you sleep. <laughs> um, they just don't need that much information. Um, they might want to know that you're local, like if you're applying for a job in Fort Collins and you already live here, it might be worth putting that you live in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, but maybe if you're applying to a job far away, you actually don't want them to know that you don't live there. Um, so your location in general is not required, um, but I would say if you're applying close to where you live right now, putting the city state can be helpful. So they just know you're kind of around already. Cool. All right, and please ask questions, um, continue to ask them as they come up. Um, you'll never be like interrupting me if you just have a random question, you can always start in the chat because um, I wanna make sure that I'm answering the questions that you all have. So I just wanted to share with you quickly this, this career competencies diagram because I think some, some students will say like, well, I don't really know what, what stuff employers want to know about me, right? Or what would they care about? Um, so these are the 10 competencies that, um, this is pulled from national data of employers across industries of the 10 highest skills that employers are looking for in candidates across the board. Um, so leadership, verbal and written communication, digital proficiency, um, career development, global contacts of being able to work um, with folks um, maybe with different backgrounds than you or all across the world, um, critical thinking and problem solving, personal accountability, which really just means being reliable um, and, and taking you know, responsibility for actions and that type of thing, self-reflection, inclusive teamwork and creativity. Um, I think the thing I wanna highlight most from these is that if you ever find yourself in a position where you're like, an employer wouldn't really care about that. If there is a competency or a skill 
um, to be pulled from that, then they, they are interested in knowing about it, right? <clears throat> Just having job experience at all shows that you know how to be responsible to show up somewhere when people are counting on you, right? Um, you know, a lot of the um, work that you've done, maybe in customer service, uh, maybe you worked with folks from lots of different types of backgrounds, um, employers want to see that, right? They value it. Um, so employers care about these, these holistic, like sometimes we think about them as like traits about ourselves. But um, the other thing I'll note about these is that they're really skills that can be gained in a variety of settings, right? There's no one specific job that's going to teach you creativity <laughs> um, or verbal and written communication. You can get this from student leadership opportunities. You can get this from volunteering. Um, so really all of those types of experiences are valuable. And you can find this on our website um, if you're interested in looking at it more, thinking through what competencies you, you, know, you might wanna work on or develop a little bit. Okay, so in terms of the bullet point formula in general, um, so underneath any experience, you might wanna be listing like the title um, and the organization, um, but generally wanna follow this format of starting with an action verb. Um, you don't need to include like, um, I did this because they'll know that your resume is all about you. Um, a skill set or specifically what you did, and then potentially a result, purpose, or accomplishment if it makes sense. So just as an example of a, of a strong bullet point, this one says provide customer service by answering questions and assisting with technology errors, resulted in being recognized by my supervisor for 20 positive feedback cards during the semester. Um, right, so we have some pretty specific accomplishments in here. Um, they, they didn't just say provide customer service, they said how they provided customer service. Um, but they still named that as a as a skill set. So this is a nice, really specific bullet point. Like I said, not all of them are going to be like that, but um, people tend to default to not giving as much detail. Um, then I'm going to go through a couple things on the resume guide. And to be honest, I'm actually just going to pull it up <laughs> since I'm screen sharing on the website. So you all know where you can find this. If you are just starting out on a resume, you just maybe have a blank page and are looking for a place to start or just want to compare your resume, um, our resume guide is a really, really great place to start. And I'll pull it up and just point out a couple of things on it. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just at the Career Center homepage. Um, if you've never been to this website before, it's just career.callestate.edu. Um, I'm going to click on this resumes icon at the top right hand of the page. And then I'm gonna click on the resume guide. So you can see they have your, the name at the top, the name should be the biggest thing on the page. Um, it does have city state here. You'll, you'll notice no home address um, and then some pretty basic contact info, just phone number and email. Um, I would say using your call state email is a good email to, to give out to employers generally. Um, and then an optional LinkedIn. Um, if, you have, if you don't have a LinkedIn account, don't worry about it. But if you do and you want employers to be able to access it, you can put it on there. So I had mentioned earlier creating some type of qualification section at the top of your resume. This could be called like a summary, um, profile, um, highlights, something like that. But because we know that employers look at resumes quickly, this is where you really get to showcase like, here are the you know two to five most important things I want you to know about me. And this is something that on my resume, I change like every single job, the qualification section is different, even if the rest of the resume doesn't change that much. Um, I want them to know that I've looked at their, like when you look at the job description and their um, requirements for the job, what they're looking for, I'm using language like specifically from that. So if they're like, I want some, you know, we are looking for someone with extensive customer service experience, I might put on my resume four plus years of customer service experience because I know that that's specifically what they're looking for. So I always say the job description is like the study guide for the test. <laughs> They tell you what they're looking for. They'll name the specific skills um, and you can use those to really highlight them throughout your resume. 
Uh, the education section, um, just putting your, your degree that you expect to receive is, is sufficient. You don't need to have your high school degree on there. Um, they'll know that you acquired a high, high school degree by the fact that you're in college now. Um, if you acquired a um, associate's degree from a community college, you can definitely put that on there as well. Um, but if you transferred from a community college, um, you don't necessarily have to, but you should put every degree that you expect to attain. Um, and I would say like starting with the name of the degree is great um, because you're always thinking, okay, if they're looking at this quickly, you know, are they more interested in the type of degree or are they more interested in that it's from Colorado State University? Um, and I would say most of the time they're more interested in the name of the degree. And then just when you expect to graduate, it doesn't have to be accurate. It's okay if it changes <laughs> just at this time when you expect that you will be graduated by. Uh, you can see they have a GPA, they have some concentrations here. And then we get down into those big sections. Um, so they, the sections that they decided to include were relevant work experience and leadership and community engagement. These section titles can be whatever you want them to be. They could be research experience if you're applying for a research position. Um, it could be, um, you know, volunteer experience. It could be extracurriculars, you know, whatever, whatever titles of sections feel like they make the most sense to you, use those. But you can see they put sort of the name of the position, the name of the company, and then the dates. So you always want to have the dates out. Um, and then they decided to put location in as well. You don't have to put location, but it's optional. And then you'll see they have somewhere between two and four bullet points for each position. Um, I would say just spend the most time on the positions that you think are most relevant to what you're applying for. Um, so you might decide to, you know, if you, let's say you're applying for a research position, you might decide to put six or seven bullet points under your research position, and then just a couple under um, like a food service job because the research experience feels more relevant. Um, but in general, this is a pretty good link. And then I'll just note that you can see there's a lot of consistency, right? So the name of the position is always in bold. The name of the organization is always um, italicized and the dates are always out on the right. So whatever, there's no format you have to follow, but whatever you choose, just make sure um, it stays pretty consistent throughout. Any questions on the resume guide? Is it helpful to look at this and kind of see an example of what an organized resume with enough detail looks like? Cool. Okay, and we're gonna go back one more time to the presentation. Um, so in general, um, I think it's awesome to have some work time on your resume so you can kind of see what questions come up. So I don't know how you all feel about breakout rooms. You definitely don't have to turn your camera on um, or anything like that. Move this bar out of the way. But I am gonna really quickly put you in breakout rooms and then for folks that are um, just in the career center, <laughs> feel free to just chat with each other a little bit. Um, and we'll only do it for about five or six minutes um, just to, to get a chance to maybe just ask questions to each other of like, here's what I'm thinking about on my resume or here's questions I have. Um, and then I have to click through all of this. And then we will come back together and see if any questions came up. Um, here's just a list of like example action verbs if you're trying to come up with like um, describing how you did something. I would say if there's one activity maybe that you do with each other um, in these breakout rooms, it would just be to create create one bullet point um, for an experience that you've had. Um, and then on your own, you can work a little bit more on, on all of the bullet points. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six people. I'm gonna do just three breakout rooms. Um, and then I'm gonna sign them manually. Sorry, this is gonna take a little bit. Um, Oops. You know what, I'll just do two. Okay, and then like I said, we'll come back in like five or six minutes.
So a couple of things. Awesome. Thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> um, so first of all, yeah. Stephanie put in the chat, if you all could put your um, CSU, just your CSU ID number and name, if it's maybe different than your Zoom name, um, just so Stephanie and I can follow up with you all with some like materials and, and resume um, stuff and career center stuff. I'll also send this presentation out. <clears throat> so if you haven't done that yet, please just put that in the chat um, sometime before the Zoom meeting ends in five minutes. Um, and then we will just keep going. So um, we don't have a ton of time left because I always think I'm going to be able to get through more than I can. <laughs> Um, but I really want briefly wanted to talk about bias on resumes. Um, and bias is something that, um, you know, is, is unethical, is illegal, um, that, that folks in the workplace have rights against. Um, there should be no identity-based bias in the hiring process. And we know that sometimes um, that happens anyway. And the employers um, draw conclusions that they shouldn't draw. They make decisions based on you know, maybe their gut instinct about something rather than people's qualifications and such. And so I just want to make sure that you all um, have some tools to protect yourself against bias um, in the workplace in general, um, but specifically on resumes. So I always say it, it's always up to you, right, what you want to share with an employer and what you don't. So if so bias is something that you're worried about, um, you don't have to share everything. You don't even have to put your first name. You can put a first initial um, if you were part of a student group, maybe that has um, an identity affiliation, you don't have to name what the identity affiliation is. You can just say that it's a student leadership group or, um, you know, identity based student group. You don't have to use the exact names of everything. Um, and there might be tons of reasons why you don't want to share everything, right? Um, it might be that there was like a political affiliation of something or, um, that you worked for a religious organization and you're not sure how that's going to be taken. So if you have questions about, I'm not sure what an employer's reaction to this is gonna be, and I wanna make sure that I'm protected against this. Know that there are always ways to, to share the skills related to something without sharing all of the information or any information that you're not comfortable sharing. Um, that being said, if you're like, if this employer is gonna have bias against me based on an identity that I hold or an experience that I've had, I don't wanna work for them anyway, I, that is also a totally fair approach, right? Um, to say, I'm gonna share everything about myself, and if they're not gonna accept me for this, I don't wanna work there anyway. So based on your own level of comfort, um, you know, maybe financial need for I need a job right now versus I have, you know, some choice and luxury, um, you can decide what to include and not include. And if you have questions about that, you can always follow up with like one of us individually about how might I word this or this is something that I feel worried about. Um, I would encourage you just in some last minute tips and tricks. I've, I know I've mentioned all of this, but tailor your resume to every job that you apply to. So I usually have like my, what I call my master resume, which is kind of everything I've ever done. And then target resumes of like, I know I'm applying for some research jobs and some customer service jobs. So I'm gonna have a resume that's kind of targeted toward um, research and a resume that's kind of targeted toward customer service. Um, focus on relevance to the employer, um, put yourself in the, the shoes of the hiring manager. Use that language from the job description. Like I said, it's the cheat sheet, it's the study guide. Um, and lastly, just save your resume as a PDF. Um, it helps the format stay consistent and, and not change based on how they're opening it. Um, and save it as your name and the name of the organization. Um, this is a good way, right? If, the, if, if they're just opening a bunch of documents and it's saved as a resume, they're not gonna know what that means. <laughs> they're not gonna know whose resume it is, um, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, you might say like, I always say like Turnquist resume and then maybe the name of the company. I've made the mistake of, of saving it as resume before. So that one's a little bit from personal experience. So I just wanna emphasize um, that if you want personal support from the Career Center, we are here to help with anything career related. Um, we're all really nice people. We all really wanna help you be successful. So whether it's like going through your resume specifically, or it's like, I'm just having a lot of anxiety around this, this job search. Like we are more than happy to talk with you about it. And this is a service that is included in your student fees. I always tell students you're already paying for it. Um, so please utilize us. Um, anything career related we can help with. We do have drop-ins um, from 10 to two every Monday to Friday. And you can access those by just going into the Career Center in the LSC, um, or you can access them virtually just on our website by clicking chat with us at the lower right-hand corner. Um, and you can also do full-time appointments with staff members. Those are about 45 minutes, whereas drop-ins are about 15.
All right, and then that is all the content that I have. Um, if you haven't put your name or student ID in yet, please do. I'm gonna hang around for a couple minutes just to see if anyone has questions like specific to them. Um, but I know this is a lot of content and a lot to remember to squeeze into an hour. So I would say just spend some time working on your resume um, on your own and then just come back to the Career Center when you're ready to have it um, maybe looked at by somebody or, worked, or have somebody help you work through it a little bit more. So thank you all for being here. Thanks for being patient and flexible with us as we kind of transitioned at the beginning. Um, and I will hang around for a couple minutes, but have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.